Hello everyone, welcome to Morning Coffee, your weekend edition of Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general energy reading for your weekend of January 17th through January 19th, 2020. But please keep in mind that just because this is dated for the weekend of the 17th through the 19th it does not mean it has to resonate only at that time. Yes, whenever you are guided to watch this reading, then that is the message for you at that time because t time is in fact an illusion and energies are fluid. Yes, <clears throat> also keep in mind that this is a general reading, all right, a general reading. So take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Um, so. I do want to thank all of you for your well wishes, for your condolences, for your love, your prayers um, that you all have sent, and even the donations um, to the Nira family. Um, I actually, I didn't expect, I didn't actually plan on going to the funeral yesterday. Um, mainly because I had some things lined up and it was just like, I, I don't, I, I had gone to the wake. I figured it's, I, I had done my, I guess I had, you know, done at least what was necessary. But then when I woke up yesterday, um, the energy was just a little heavier than I had expected, than I had anticipated. And I thought I'd be able to do morning coffee. And I was like, you know what? I really, I really need to go to this funeral. So I ended up going and I'm very, very, very glad that I did. Um, I don't want to talk about it too much because I'm already getting choked up again, but suffice it to say, it was a tough day, but it was a good day. Um, it was a very, very good day. And so I just want to thank all of you for your love and your support, for understanding, for being patient with me as I dealt with my role in this. Um, and I do want to mention I the the link I forgot to put the link in the last morning coffee that I did, but I'm gonna put the link in again. If anyone would still like to make a donation to the Nero family, um, it would be greatly appreciated. I'm gonna put it in this the description box of this video, and it's still up on my on the in the bio of my Instagram account. So. It's going to stay up there through the weekend. Um, I'll change it on Monday. But if anyone would still like to make a donation, you are more than welcome to do so. It is greatly appreciated. Um, thank you. Thank you so much. For those of you to those of you that have already donated, I couldn't be more grateful. Thank you for being such a beautiful support system, not only for me throughout, you know, supporting me on the channel, but to someone who is an absolute best friend. Okay, I have to stop talking about this now because I'm starting to cry. Um, okay. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Okay, so anyway. Um, I think that's it. Yeah, cool. All right, so let's get into the uh, pre-shuffle energies. So the card that came out for your pre-shuffle right now is the Two of Pentacles in reverse. It was the only card that came out while I was shuffling. Nothing else came out after that. And I kind of, I stopped there because I was like, hmm, because I had already gotten, <clears throat> I had already gotten a little bit of a message here. And the, 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 the strongest message that I'm getting with this Two of Pentacles is an energy of, I just heard indecisiveness. So it could have been a situation in which maybe you were juggling options. I kind of feel like... Someone might have been juggling options in love or maybe keeping their options open in love, waiting for something, waiting for some like sort of like ship to come in or maybe some sort of news or some, I guess that foghorn is a little bit of a confirmation here, but you guys, <laughs> there it goes again. You guys see this, this ship here, right? Um, and, and it's interesting because the two of pentacles has been, this side of the two of pentacles at least has been coming out lately and it's been an energy in which you know someone was very passionate or someone is is moving like the collective energy has been someone is moving or shifting moving to new situations whatnot whatever new circumstances new scenarios new surroundings new career opportunities whatever however that resonates for you um but there was i'm hearing indecisiveness there's some there was some sort of indecisiveness in the past or at least associated with this at some point it, it kind of feels like some sort some semblance of 
a ship has come in for someone here. You have the Eight of Cups <clears throat> as your overall energy, coupled with the King of Cups. Okay, and the King of Cups is facing. And when I look at this King of Cups, I just get this feeling like you've made a decision. And it's a decision that, is, that somehow is going to support the wishes of your inner child. Okay, and I, I, know, I know this is the Eight of Cups, and usually the Eight of Cups represents walking away from something or leaving something behind um, in order, f in service to greater, finding something new, something better, something greater, in order to, um, go, to, to, to go on some sort of maybe a quest, if you will, to complete something and the energy that i'm getting from the eight of cups is an energy of completion and when i look at it and i see this young boy here i mean it, it looks like a boy could be a girl <laughs> wow okay i'm going to show you what's on the other side of this king of cups in just a second but i mean it doesn't matter this could be a boy it could be a girl it really doesn't matter gender is not really what we're focusing on here okay even in terms of talking about the king of cups we're not talking about gender but the it, what the feeling that i get from this is like there's it's 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 similar to how i described the eight of cups in the past where someone is walking away from something but they're walking away from eight neatly stacked cups in order to go find something in order to complete their stack or i.e in order to complete their 10. Oftentimes that could be a relationship where you know you've spent your life building up all of this great stuff for you, but the relationship is the last piece of that puzzle. That partner, that girlfriend, that boyfriend, that husband, that wife, that life partner, that that soulmate, whatever. And that's kind of the energy that I'm getting from this Eight of Cups, but it's a little different because in some cases, I'm feeling like you could be walking away from something altogether. I just heard a lifestyle potentially, but it literally, it literally could be anything. Um, but you're walking away from something in service of, uh, in, in service of your inner child. So in service of bringing something to life, bringing something to fruition that is maybe has been a desire of yours ever since you were a little kid, or this is just like an innate desire, uh, something to experience that your inner child, your inner sense of innocence has always wanted, has come here to experience in some cases. So for some of you that could be leaving behind certain lifestyle choices or certain lifestyle um, res uh, 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 affiliations or whatnot, whatever, and and I and I, I'm not saying it that way <clears throat> to make it seem like <clears throat> there is a lifestyle out there that is unacceptable. I'm not trying to pass judgment on that. But what I am saying is, it kind of feels like someone would be leaving something behind in order to bring something into fruition to really complete their life, to complete their happiness, to really bring that deeper sense of um emotional fulfillment into your life and it has a lot to do with your inner child okay now again this is a general reading so we don't necessarily just have to be talking about romance we could be talking about career finances blah 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 whatnot whatever it literally could be anything okay but with this king of cups energy here this is emotional maturity this is someone who knows what they want this is uh, someone that's compassionate open-hearted loving caring considerate um but this is someone that's also potentially connected to their creativity the cups suit can represent emotions yes but it can also represent creativity okay um but i just get a really strong sense of maturity here and i also i want to show you what's underneath the king of cups it's the eight of swords but it's this side of the eight of swords where there's basically it looks like you're breaking yourself free okay you see how loose those ropes are around that woman she can literally she can literally shimmy her way out of that rope. Whereas on this side, oh, fucking right, on this side of the card, look at how tight that is. Like the, there's, a, it's like it's like you would need those swords around you to cut the, to cut that rope off because you're so damn tight, or it's so damn tight around you. But here, this side, 
it's loose as hell. You literally, I mean, I don't understand how that hasn't just slipped right off her. You know what I mean? I don't even understand how it's holding that sword at her back. Like, that's some loose ass shit, right? And then look, 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 look what's underneath the Eight of Swords. Strength. But the side of the strength where you're facing the devil. And it's like you're looking the devil right in the eye and saying, you're not going to hold me down. You're not going to hold me back any longer. There's an energy of, there's definitely an energy of coming into some sense of maturity, coming into also, I just heard self-mastery here and not being indecisive anymore, not like trying to keep your options open, especially if this is a relationship or a love situation. It's like not trying to keep your options open for fear of maybe you getting hurt by the person that you want. It's almost like not having a plan B any longer, going full force Ooh, and, and, and again, guys, this doesn't even have to be romantic. It doesn't even have to be romance, although that was something that I did feel specifically. So for whomever that resonates for. And I do feel like it's, I do feel like it's a man. I'm, I'm, okay, spirit is saying a masculine en entity. Well, a masculine entity. Well, wouldn't that be, is entity more physical than energy? Or are they, are they syn synonyms? Anyway, I am seeing a man, but it could be just a masculine figure or a masculine, someone who is more masculinely oriented energetically. Um, but it doesn't have to be that. I mean, like speaking of like a plan B, maybe this is a career choice for you. Maybe you were, you were juggling back and forth between really doing what it is you truly want to do and having that fail safe, like having that, that, that security net, but, or that safety net or security blanket. But now you're kind of like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going full out. I'm going like balls deep in this. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I'm so damn vulgar. But you know what? I'm, I am I love it. I have fun with it. But that's kind of like, like no more just the tip, man. We're going balls deep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, man. All right. But see, that's that's the energy that I'm feeling from it. You know, it's a it's literally it's, OK. Yeah, it's a commitment. You're 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 and I know don't don't let that freak you out. But it's like you're committing to following your heart's desire. You're committed to finding some sort of sense of happiness some sort of sense some sense of deeper fulfillment okay and that's a good thing and your inner child is like it feels elated finally you're honoring me with this this is beautiful like i can't wait i'm so excited mm -hmm. that's really cool you guys okay cool <clears throat> so with that said um i'm gonna reset here and then we'll see what else we've got for the weekend. Yes. Keep in mind, guys, that this, and I, it's interesting. <clears throat> I'm feeling compelled to say this again, but this, this, these energies are fluid, right? This doesn't have to be just the weekend. And I kind of feel like the energy that we're, that I'm channeling right now, that we're discussing right now, is something that's going to extend maybe even throughout the week, the next month, or I'm sorry, the rest of the month, but even really. The rest of the year it, it's almost and actually i'm saying that I'm, I'm i'm throwing out all the different options out there just because this is a general reading but what i really heard was for the rest of the year like this is something that this is not just going to be it doesn't really feel like something that's going to be you know oh i'm going to do this for a week and see no like there is a serious form of commitment here in terms of your happiness your fulfillment your joy this could have to do with family Oh, that didn't work so well. Let's try that again. <laughs> okay. Let me give it one more. And then we'll get started, yeah? Hey, Virgo. Cool. Sorry, I, I was saying hi to Virgo because the hermit came up. Okay. <laughs> Alrighty, here we go. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Foghorn. <laughs> please, please bring forward the best messages. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for our weekend of Friday, January 17th through Sunday, January 19th, 2020.
Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, guys. Look, there really is... Okay, five shuffles. All right, cool. There really is an energy of, like, honoring your heart in some way because I'm seeing green for the collective right now, which is the heart chakra. This is two. There's... Re yeah, really coming from a, a place of the heart space. This is three. Letting your heart be your guide. Honoring your intuition. Honoring your inner knowing. Honoring your emotions. This is four. Oh. Oh, let's try that again. Yeah. Okay. Four. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Oh, come on. Four. There you go. And five. good this deck is so i mean i really like using this deck but it's really difficult to shuffle okay let's get into this for the weekend here january 17th through january 19th what do we got what do we got okay um i think i'm gonna get spirit says two more passes so we're gonna do that so one one here weekend edition okay january 17th through january 19th 2020 okay last one last one here we go let's make it count let's make it count <laughs> january 19th, 17th through january 19th 20 okay Ooh. All right. And there you have it. Overall energy. We do have the magician. Ooh. <gasps> You're lying. With the king of wands at the bottom of the deck. Okay. And then we have the nine of swords, the ace of pentacles, the queen of wands, the knight of cups, and the five of wands. We've got the counterparts on the table here, kids. The king and the queen of wands. So. Okay, so what I'm seeing here, I'm seeing this from a counterpart situation. Not gonna lie. Um, external counterparts, so like in soulmates, twin flames, whatever. Um, but what I'm also, I'm looking for a narrative that could be, that would be relevant outside of that. Because again, while yes, I am a bit of a twin flame guide, twin flame reader, if you want to even call me that, those things just kind of come out <laughs> and I'm on the journey myself. So it makes sense. But I try to make these as objective and inclusive as possible. So in terms of that, let's not look at the, the, the twin flame or the soulmate counterpart situation right now. Let's look at something. Let's look at the, the, the overall or the bigger picture here. There is an energy of someone, someone manifesting something, okay? Uh, knowing what it is that they, that they want, probably being, well, needing to be confident in it. Um, waiting for the right time to strike, biding their time, but manifesting it. Okay, bringing the opportunity to them. Okay, um, maybe even taking some sort of action to start to generate these opportunities. Okay, but there's some sort of fear, apprehension, lack of um, lack of confidence, because you have the Nine of Swords and the Five of Wands. You also do have the Queen of Wands, though. There's some sort of fear, some sort of apprehension here. There might be a lot of confusion. There might be a little, a bit of overwhelm or burden here. Because look at the, the queen's throne. It's like it's, it's got all those vines or those, those roots there. Um, and I'm just getting an energy of maybe there's just a lot that needs to be overcome or a lot that needs to be faced. And that's kind of what I'm, I'm picking up on here between the five of wands and the nine of swords. It's like 
this could even be an energy of maybe you're just overwhelmed with the amount of ways that something can happen with the with the amount of options that you have to go about something um there could be a lot of input from other people external circumstances circumstances in the past that may have hindered you from going in this direction or taking this i just heard a new leap of faith okay some there could be there could have been a lot that you're dealing with right now from the past that could be trying to block you or trying to stop you um but there is definitely an energy of wanting to move forward with a heart's desire and start something new a new job a new career um an, uh, a new home a new living situation um in essence planting a new seed starting something new getting something off the ground um and i do feel like it is i am feeling very strongly that this could be about business for someone and so then the advice there would be to not stress so much about it, to not allow your fear get into the, the way, and to not allow um, differing of opinion or a plethora of options to deter you. With this Queen of Wands energy, I really kind of feel like if this is something like you're making a new career move or you're you're just making you're just making a big change in your life and you're you're starting over starting anew i guess you could say turning over a new leaf somehow allow the magnet magnetism of your inner femininity bring forward the right opportunity the right circumstances for you it's and i understand i understand you're you're in this energy right now of the king of wands of like wanting to move forward i mean yes don't get me wrong the king does definitely know how to bide his time but there is still a bit of like um anxious energy with this where you it, it's time to start making moves or at least you feel like it's time to start making moves you want to be making moves and yet you don't maybe you don't really know how allow the, this sense of inner femininity with the queen of wands here to grab it to, to 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 pull something in okay be receptive allow yourself sit in the, your king of wands energy in your knowing in your confidence okay in your focus right but then also sit in your queen of wands energy and allow that and that 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 sense of direction that focus that desire that 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 fire that passion to pull towards you what are the opportunities that you need to take flight that's what i just heard okay okay but this is really good i really like this you guys i really like this a lot now okay that aside <clears throat> let's get into the counterpart situation so it seems here that the masculine okay and we're talking now at, from this point of view we're talking about two individuals okay now we're getting into the romantic sector of the reading right or, or or the message you have the masculine individual well you have the individual that embodies or represents dominantly masculine energy and then you have the individual that represents dominantly feminine energy okay the masculine here is manifesting a new opportunity is calling out to the universe and saying all right universe this is what I want. How do we make this happen? I want to make an offer. I want to show some love. I want to start over with the feminine. But she's kind of got her back to me. And I don't know what the hell to do about it. And I just heard, go with your gut. Now, in this case, I know, right? That's shut up is that the king of pentacles underneath the king of wands stop it it is that's cool um interesting and with this king of pentacles energy that's here it's like this masculine individual has really grown a lot i heard has really changed his ways has really learned about himself or herself we're talking and we're not we're talking energy not gender okay but if this if you like say masculines out there that could be watching this if this resonates with you you have gone through a strong healing process all right you've found a sense of abundance within um there's a lot of new growth around you you're the you're your energetic space 
is way more fertile now than it has been in the past because you've been really working on yourself, really learning, really growing, digging deep, finding some sense of inner security and nurturance. And that nurturance comes from the feminine that side, right? So it really kind of, especially with, you know, all of this, you know, all of these flowers, all this growth here, I really do feel like y you have come to a point where you are really balanced or have a greater balance between the masculine and feminine energies within you, which is giving you the drive and the understanding to connect with an external feminine counterpart okay that's really good but here's the thing you've got this five of wands and nine of swords the fears and, and are illusionary and it's kind of interesting because i feel like it's not just the masculine that's in this position i feel like it's the feminine too but she see her back is turned so she's probably trying not trying to let on that she's terrified herself that she also probably wants this knight of cups ace of pentacles wants you masculine to come in and just like offer a love some sort of love to her or show her that you know you have changed or that you have grown or that you ha you do i heard specifically that you do want to do this differently from before i do feel like this nine of swords five of wands energy is very very mutual between the king and the queen of wands and you know what's really interesting about this is underneath the king of pentacles here is the page of swords and i really do feel like the masculine is in an energy of really kind of keeping an eye on the feminine and it may be in an effort to three of pentacles no four of pentacles interesting stability it may be in an effort to figure out when the right time to strike is how do i reconnect to this person how do i show them that i love them <laughs> without them mm, taking advantage of me interesting wow that just got deep masculine okay i mean what i originally was gonna say how it was it sounded like you were saying how do i show this person that i love them without them taking my head off <laughs> hmm. that's funny okay let's get into some clarification here so i'm actually going to split this up right as they are so we have, I'm going to start with the Queen of Wands, the Nine of Swords, and the Five of Wands. I'm using a new deck to clarify. This is a deck that was sent in by a viewer, by a subscriber. It is the Light Seers Tarot. It is such a beautiful deck. Um, I'm really excited to start using it. I did kind of break it in one, one day. The imagery, uh, a few nights ago, the imagery is gorgeous, is really gorgeous. So, um, just... Oh goodness, I am having such trouble shuffling today. Get it together, Eric. Jesus. Come on now. Alright, so I'm gonna just gonna get I'm gonna shuffle for a bit. I can't seem to get it together. There we go. So we're gonna look at this Queen of Wands, Nine of Swords, Five of Wands energy here. What is this? Let's look a little deeper. I'm going to be honest with you. I really, I've, I'm, I'm going to be completely 100% honest, guys. I feel like it's the feminine that's more in this scared energy and like inner conflict. Because I, oh, I didn't say this, but um, from this five of wands, I'm picking up an energy of inner conflict, like strong inner conflict. Like, I, and I just heard the masculine is doing this too. Okay. Um, but I think the reason why I, I felt so compelled to say that this, that I feel the feminine is going through this too, because I, re because we've been talking about how the masculine may be in that energy for some time now, but it needs to be we, masculines. You need to be very clear. The feminine is in this energy too. She's scared shitless, even though she may be poker facing out the wazoo, like, like a champ. She's, she's very scared. <laughs> she's very scared and she's very torn in some cases because it's an energy of i really love this person 
but I just heard, I don't know if I'm ready to heal, or I don't know if I'm, I am I am healed, I don't know if I'm ready, or I don't know if this other person is ready, what's going to happen? Is this just going to be the same? If I let you in, is this just going to be the same old, same old? Let me give this one more shuffle. Oh, goodness gracious, come on, man. What is the problem today? <laughs> um... They wanted me to say something, you know, and now I've forgotten it, but most of your fears are illusionary, feminine. You have to let the past go. And to be quite honest, if you really do love this person as much as you say you do, then there really is only one way to find out whether it's going to be the same old, same old, isn't it? Now. I understand exactly what you're saying. Are you out of your freaking mind? I am not going to put myself into the position to be hurt again. Check it out, guys. Life is going to hurt. I'm not asking you, spirit is not asking you to allow some sort of narcissistic or toxic energy back into your life. But if if someone has is really in an energy of having made a change or wants to show you something new or something different, and you truly do love this person, then... Why not give them a chance to prove themselves? Why not give them a chance to show you? And if it doesn't work, I understand that's going to be painful, but it doesn't work and you can move on. I guess maybe that's not easy. It's maybe it's not that simple. It's really not that simple. Okay. <clears throat> like, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying to allow toxic individuals or toxic circumstances to come to enter into your life and i'm definitely not saying to compromise your integrity or to allow or to uh, allow yourself to receive that which you know you are not worthy of meaning anything less than you know that you deserve right but i really want to tell you to give this king of wands a chance because when I look at this King of Wands, it's like he's ready and he's serious. And you are letting your illusions and your fears stop you from getting in the way. Okay, last shuffle. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't say that correctly. You're allowing your illusions and fears to get in the way and to stop you. Okay, I think you get it. <laughs> okay, so let's look at this. Queen of Wands, Nine of Swords, Five of Wands. That foghorn, man. Hey, that construction, I'm going to, I want to post a picture, an update of the construction across the street because it looks like they've got a lot of the, um, the foundation in, which is really cool. I just want to give you guys an update because I know a lot of you said, or some of you said that you like the updates on the construction. Oh, look at that. Eight of wands. The five of wands again. Good Lord. One more shuffle. Two of wands. Oh, <sighs> wow. Okay. Well, all right. Spirit is saying two more, one more shuffle, but I'll, I'll do that in a second. But I want to, I want to explain what I'm getting with this so far. You have the eight of wands, the five of wands, but with the two of wands at the bottom of the deck. So look, and actually, and I'm not the only one that's been channeling this lately. Look at, first of all, look at this. Just, just look how beautiful these cards are. If my camera would ever freaking focus. Come on. Come on, you. You thing. You thing. Good lord. Okay, anyway, look, it, these cards are gorgeous. Beautiful. Anyway, um, there is definitely some sort of communication that could be coming in or some sort of swift movement, swift movement, swift progress. However, your indecisiveness, your doubt, your fear, your inner conflict is blocking this. You have got to make a decision and stick with it. And I just heard, allow this person to come into your life or allow this to happen. And it's, it's almost as if what this is also saying with this two of wands, it's like some of you have already made this decision. You made this decision a long time ago. It's like, look at, how, look at this woman. And we're definitely talking to the feminine right now, even though it doesn't matter that there's a woman on this card, but we're talking to the feminine for sure, at least in this, for what I'm saying here right now. You've made this decision a long time ago. Look at how she's sitting there holding that wand, not even anywhere near focused on the other one that's behind her. I kind of get the idea that she's almost like 
completely forgotten about that one or forgot about that one a long time ago. She's not focused on that. She's focused on the one that she truly wants and that she knows deep down that she wants. But still allowing her fear and illusion to kind of get in the way. You have got to make a decision and stick with it. Even if, honestly, guys, even if that decision is to <clears throat> align with the relationship or the circumstances that fulfill you the most, whether we're talking relationship or we're talking like a career change or something like that, creative project, something like that, okay? You've got to align, focus on aligning with the energies of your highest good and what is really going to serve your soul. And if it just so happens to bring someone back into your life, well, that's divinely orchestrated. Make sense? And I understand there are fears about the past, but you have to let those go in order for the future to be what it's truly meant to be. I'm gonna give one more. I'm gonna get a little bit more here. Please, spirit. <clears throat> <laughs> and oh my god and the top three all right there's that two of wands again overall energy is the nine of pentacles so there's a sense of independence here for sure okay you're standing in a sense of independence you're standing in your independence and that's a good thing however i think in some cases, some of you might be, that might be getting in your way. So you, what came out here is the Four of Swords, the Devil, and the Tower. Then the, I, was pull, I was instructed to pull the top three cards. We have the Four of Pentacles, the Page of Swords, and the Two of Wands. Okay, so... This is what you're afraid of. The devil. And look at, and I, I really do love the way that the devil is depicted in this deck because it's, that's a very attractive man. At least by some standards, he's very attractive. He looks very alluring, right? But also, looks can be deceiving. But see, that's the point. Looks can be deceiving. So what you may be perceiving in the physical as danger blockage whatnot whatever actually may not be that at all it might be a trick it might be an illusion i.e things may not necessarily be as bad as you think or as they as you expect them to be you're being guided to rest fall back a little bit like take a break re relax meditate silence your mind quiet the ego because there's a, a sudden change and this tower energy is a change in perspective. What I feel like here is the tower is representing an energy of something that you, a change in your own perspective. And I'm still kind of, I feel like I'm still speaking to some feminines out there. Um, but take this as it resonates, guys. I'm, uh, we're bouncing all over the place here, but just take it as it resonates, okay? Um, I think this is a change in perspective for you. This tower is the destruction of a structure or, or, or a belief system saying that this is just toxic and devil and devil energy. But what you're holding on to is toxic. You're holding on to the toxicity when you need to just be releasing, relinquishing control and letting go and allowing the universe to guide you. You have the four of pentacles with the page of swords and the two of wands. Um, this is really interesting. It's an energy of you having made your decision, knowing who or what it is that you want, but then holding on to maybe the past while still keeping tabs. Page of Swords. That's for the, some of the feminines out there. However, I do feel like this is the masculine energy coming through as well. Saying that, look, I know I want you or I want this to happen between us. That's what I just heard. He or she has made that decision and now they're kind of like watching you maybe. I don't know. That was something that came through, but 
Take it as it resonates. Okay. So now, let's move on to this Knight of Cups with the Ace of Pentacles. I do want to reshuffle here. Let's look a little deeper into this. Knight of Cups. Ace of Pentacles. One more. Here we go. Strength. Yeah, this is going to take a lot of strength and a lot of courage. Overall energy right now is the Page of Wands. There is definitely someone that someone wants to send a message. And this is going to take a lot of strength, a lot of courage. Okay. Self-mastery. Mastering the beast within, whatnot, whatever. All right, cool. I'm going to give one more shuffle here. Let's see. Oh. Interesting. Knight of Wands is in reverse. Overall energy of the Eight of Swords. Good lord. <laughs> Gosh, this is like back and forth, back and forth. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Um. So with the Knight of Wands in reverse here, I I feel an energy of someone not wanting to move too quickly, not wanting to come on too strong, not wanting to feeling kind of trapped. I feel like someone is really, really passionate about something and really just wants to move forward. And I guess this Eight of Swords energy could be a little bit good in the sense of like control, but also it could it could very, very easily slip into over control and confinement and prison and, and feeling imprisoned. There is an energy of wanting to okay, with strength here. Two eights, by the way, which is a good thing. Abundance. But strength here is making this Eight of Swords energy not as bad as it potentially could be. There is an energy of coming out of some sort of mental confinement, mental prison, feeling trapped, feeling like you can't accomplish something, feeling like you can't move forward with something. But it's because of this energy of like self-mastery or, or, or taming the beast within. Finding a strong, deep sense of self-control. Knight of Wands in reverse with, the, with, with strength. That's okay. That's pretty good. The Knight of Wands in reverse in this situation doesn't necessarily mean that you don't have the passion, that you don't have the drive. It just feels like you're not trying to go overboard you're not trying to burn out you're not trying to rush into something you're not trying to move too hastily and coupled with the knight of cups here it's an energy of being respectful even of the circumstances the situation or even the other person all right that's good Okay. Okay. I want to get a final closing message from Spirit here. Because there's a lot of... There's a good deal of confusing energy. I just want to get... I want to get Spirit's advice on this. Because this is... I, I mean, I don't even... What would I even title this today? I don't know. I just don't know, but we will see. One last shuffle. Okay. What's your advice, Spirit? What do you have to say to us about this? <laughs> the Page of Pentacles has just fallen. I heard, I'm hearing, take a leap of faith. Five of Cups. Mm-hmm. Two of Wands. Make your decision and stick to it. So, 
page of pentacles has fallen out over here and i do feel like this is kind of the masculine energy on this side honor your commitment you're starting over you're starting new you're starting fresh you're making a new choice you're moving in a new direction you're starting a new life you're turning over a new leaf commit to that honor that that's good i feel like that's where you are though okay on this side though with the feminine energy here and the feminine being all up in her head she's got the five of cups you're still focused on the negative aspects you're still focused on the past and this i kind of want to say that this really does feel like an energy of crying over spilt milk now it's like okay let's get up off the floor here and let's 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 let go of all of this that has spilled out and let's focus on what still stands and what still stands is the love two of cups what still stands is the balance between masculine and feminine within you if this is not necessarily about love especially if you're leaving behind something that was some sort of safety net safety blanket whatnot whatever you've just got to let that go and focus on what still what you still have or where it is you're trying to go because you can, you're not going to be successful with wherever you want to go if you've got some even part of your focus in the past you have got to put all of your focus in the present moment the here and now and direct that towards your future the past is the past you can't change it you can't take it back you can't go back and 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 start over or, or redo it you're not even meant to there's no need to you learn something from it take what you've learned and move forward not backwards okay our oracle guidance today is coming from the earth warriors Alrighty, let's see what Oracle Guidance for today. Last shuffle. Okie dokie. Oracle Guidance for, excuse me, not today, for our weekend. For our weekend. Friday, January 17th through Sunday, January 19th. Oh, I am I I I severely I sincerely apologize if I butcher <laughs> the name of this, but Kente? Card number 28. Sweet paradox of empowering grace interesting kente <sighs> wow <laughs> okay when the mind says no but the heart leaps with joy we are ripe for a transmission of empowering grace the sweet paradox is that the more impossible the situation appears to be, the more we are supported through grace, and our divine success manifests swift and complete. Let the faith of the heart overcome doubt. Allow your mind to be filled with wonder at the unlimited power of the divine, and you shall bear witness to sacred manifestation. In a reading, this card says, when there is something within your heart that you know you are on this planet to accomplish, you shall be given equal grace, power, talent, and ability to succeed in that mission. This is the divine promise and sacred plan for you. If uh, you hear that foghorn, <laughs> are you going to take this advice? Because I really, I really suggest you do so. <laughs> this is the divine promise and sacred plan for you. If a miracle is required for success, then one shall be given. Pray with courage and confidence for your rightful divine inheritance and allow your bold heart and loving soul to believe in your beautiful, hope-filled destiny. I want to read the spiritual guidance here. Spiritual guidance says, Kente, the sky jewel of the Andes, brings you 
hummingbird who bears the sole medicine of spiritual grace the evolution to conquer any obstacle and the extraordinary power of the heart the concept of spiritual grace can be challenging to the mind we often don't realize just how much we have conditioned we have been conditioned, excuse me, to subconsciously demand that progress in our lives be difficult, even whilst at a conscious level, we bemoan the struggle and wish that things could be easier. We want help, but we believe that we are unworthy or have to earn our success completely off the back of our own efforts. Whilst the divine wants us to engage and participate in the fulfillment of our destiny, if we do not surrender our arrogance and learn how to surrender spiritually, we will never fulfill our potential. There is a way to follow, I'm sorry, there is a way to allow for spiritual grace so that any obstacle can be surmounted, even the invisible ones that seem to block your progress from some unknown source. It is not a question of needing to become more powerful, but rather of your relationship to the divine needing to become more visited, uh, uh, vitalized, excuse me. Then grace can flow creating success in the same situations that would have otherwise defeated you. When Hummingbird brings you medicine, you have a high spiritual destiny, one that is going to triumph against apparently insurmountable odds stacked against you. Hummingbirds have the highest metabolic rate of any animal on earth, with their hearts capable of beating at over a thousand beats per minute. These remarkable little creatures have an exceptionally high need for oxygen, yet some of the places we evolved, I'm sorry, yet some of the species have evolved to thrive in the low oxygen, high altitude environment of the Andes Mountains, flying at over 15,000 feet above sea level in truly rarefied air. This has become possible because of a seemingly tiny genetic mutation in how oxygen is metabolized in the blood. This subtle inner evolution opened up the power of some hummingbirds to thrive, quite literally, in higher worlds. Hummingbird medicine empowers the soul for success in situations that would seem the most unlikely. This medicine brings a subtle adjustment within the blood or feminine life force and how it receives and processes the enlivening presence of spirit. This in turn leads to extraordinary and heightened abilities. Trust in the incredible possibilities that are birthed through the union of sacred masculine and sacred feminine energies within you. So there you have it, kids. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that was helpful for you. And I hope you guys have an absolutely fan fantastic weekend and i look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee monday morning y'all yeah? take care Mwah. bye